I'm finished. I'm finished! Stop waking me up! Right, so... Let's... Let's... Mosey. Mosey. <laughs> A woman, she's like, ho, 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 I've got this corset, and by golly, I'm going to make use of it. Look at you. That woman is loud and proud. Or medium volumed and slightly afloat. Also, she's got a policeman Ben's voice. Wow. Wow. Amazing. I am so amazed out the backside. Anyway, did I say that I was going to go do some plot-related stuff? What are you talking about? Then, first. <laughs> yeah. Fate smiled on us today. Some degenerates broke in two nights ago and stole the key. They got to Clara's as well and found the Drimian keystone. Clara thinks it was Francisco and was looking for blood, but I just paid the 1,000 asked for from my own pocket. The keystone is irreplaceable. Without it, the Wailing Keep would remain closed to us, and its ancient Drimian secrets are worth far more than that paltry sum. I hate to admit it, but Clara was right, and these events of late confirm it. We have to go as soon as an expedition can be arranged. Winter winds be damned. Da -da. We depart at dawn for the keep. I've arranged for Edith's brother and his wife to stay while I'm gone. After the break-in, someone should be here in my absence. Twenty years ago, I could have handled the brigands myself. I've told Daniel to use deadly force to protect himself and the women if anyone breaks in, but I don't expect he'll need to. I've also asked the watch to keep an extra eye on things while I'm gone. Clara insists that it must have been Francesco's men, but I still think she gives him too much credit. Still, it is only a bit peculiar. Still, it is a bit peculiar that... Still, it is a bit peculiar that they only took the keys and went right for the prize. Who else could it have been? The tramp? Certainly not. As I was going through my notes, I spotted the note from Will. Could it have been him? He must have known there was something of value to me in that apartment. I would hate to think it was him, a man who sits with us at holiday table. He's been nothing but loyal help to me over the years, but I'll keep an eye on Jenny's hand all the same. I suppose what's done is done, and I will not spend any more valuable time contemplating it. The important thing is that we got the keystone back, and I shall keep it on my person at all times. Planning for this expedition has made me feel young again, like the great Davidov of old. So here's the reference to the stone being gotten. So maybe if we didn't get it, then some other thief theoretically did, and the text doesn't change or something. I don't know. Hey, y'all. Oh, there's some loot. Hey, y'all. Okay. Let's actually go place now, shall we? Sounds mediocre. Oh, <laughs> you walk that. There? Walk, lady. You're a vocal well, twin looks of like this one. Because again. at some point I read on some site, like maybe <laughs> TV tropes or something about like, hey, if you want to make an alien race, maybe you could make them have multiple voice boxes and be poly voice boxed or something. So I went on Google, I'm like, multiple voice boxes, poly something, and got no worthy results at all. Great story. So anyways, stick the old button here. Bloop. And boom. and we gotta be careful because we can't be spotted, so forced ghost. Uh oh, oh. God damn it. Okay. Listen. Listen. Right. It's that thing you can do at doors that I never ever do. Oh sigh. A hairbrush in a mirror. I should get one of those. I definitely have not been abusing my hair. Like I abused the Doom Engine recently. Nay. <laughs> Pickaxe. Well, that's rather well goodly hid. I should keep an eye out for secrets here as well. Hey, check out this thingy thing. Anyway, enough of that pleasantry stuff. Let's read the stuff. 
No matter how I try, I cannot stop thinking of Robert, despite his last name. He was charming, gracious, handsome, everything I could ask for, but for his father being the hated rival of my own. I couldn't muster the courage to reveal to him my own last name, but I know if I ever see him again, if anything comes of this, I must do so some day. I dread that more sound... I dread... But I know if I ever... But I know if I ever see him again, if anything comes of this, I must do so some day. I dread that more soundly than anything I've ever known. I can bear it no longer. Today I am sending, via trusted courier, a note to Robert asking him to meet me at Ten Bells Three Eves Hence at Red's studio. Red was wonderful, as he always has been to me, when I explained to him I am in love and needed a rendezvous location and needed to keep it secret. He promised to help me maintain discretion, and I'm indebted to him for that. Even if things go poorly with Robert, it must never get back to my father that we saw each other even one time. And now I must play the waiting game, as I expect Robert has this last week. I received a reply from Robert this morning, agreeing to meet me this evening. When nothing arrived last night, I began to fear his rejection, but the courier told me there was a mishap which delayed the delivery of my note by a day. Oh, my stars, I cannot wait to see him tonight, to see if the chemistry we felt at the Bumblesons masquerade ball was real. I have hardly slept, so full of life and love do I feel after my rendezvous with Robert last night. He is both charming and intelligent. We spoke on dozens of subjects, and he seemed intrigued that I was conversant on so many of them. I guess he assumed I'd spent my life being coddled, but upon learning I'm a voracious reader, he realized I am his equal, and that opened up a whole new level of emotional intimacy between us. Before our parting kiss, I asked him to meet again three nights hence, and he immediately agreed. I cannot wait to see him again. I feel so connected to him already, after only one meeting. It will be torture being apart from him. Now I've experienced the connection we have. It's taken me several days to write this entry. So consumed by emotion have I been. At our second meeting, when Robert threw open the studio window to sing of our love to the watchman outside, I immediately realized that I could carry the charade no further and must reveal to him my last name. It hit him hard, but after he sorted through his emotions for a minute, he declared his love to be true regardless of our father's feud and swore to me I am his one true love and damn the consequences. It does make our continued meetings more dangerous, however, and that anxiety is what has delayed the writing of these words. I know not what to do, but I must continue seeing him. The last few weeks have been both glorious and agonizing, having to meet secretly in the dead of night, not even telling my most trusted friends, but we finally realized we had to confide in someone and revealed our love to Brother Thaddeus a few days ago. He was wonderful and supportive and agreed to marry us come springtime, but urged us not to reveal our love to anyone else yet and that he would try to work on both our fathers to lay a foundation that might allow them to accept our love. If he cannot, and I fear no words he might say will succeed in bridging the gulf between Fairbanks and Highwater, we will have no choice but to elope. Robert is going away in a few days on a winter holiday with his family, and I'm dreading the thought of not seeing him for a week. The last few months have been so difficult. I fear Mother knows I'm in love, but luckily she has not pressed the matter. I guess some things a mother just knows through her maternal intuition. I did take the chance of giving to Robert a small portrait of myself a few weeks ago to connect us in a small way between our meetings. And that is just the kind of mushy, romantic crap that I love. It's not crap, but it is romantic. Sigh! You know... I gotta say, uh, too, that, you know, I was just like, heard the writing on the story's good. Well, uh, allow me to elaborate on that. See, this kind of story here, it's, you know, it could easily be done just like following the motions and like, hey, they're in love now. Hey, the families hate each other now, bloopity bloop. But I really like that they give you the details, right? They fill you in. They don't just say, oh, they met and they blinked at each other and, and winked and smooched once and now they're in love, end of story. No, you know, it it tells you, okay, they connected and spoke on subjects and their connection was both emotional and intellectual. And it really kind of lets the thing breathe a bit and makes it more believable that they really are in true love and and, you know... The feud is also kind of like that. It's not just like, why we're feuding for some reason. 
you get little hints as to why you may be feuding, like the s stolen sword and so forth, or maybe just the stuff. Well, anyways, whatever. I like I like this, yo. So, oh yes, the library key. So they, I snatched this key from the guy at the window on my first playthrough, but it was rather difficult. Shoot, can I turn... Wait, I can turn off this lamp, can't I? I think I can, but I... Oh boy, I don't know, man. I don't want to risk it. But yes, Robert and Julia's story. Top notch. Get on there, there, dude, dog. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I thought. Hang on. There's nothing back here? It's just like a... A chill-out place. I guess. Fair enough. Oh. Put my finger up and say, I don't know. Uh -oh. Sometimes that guy stops at the window, or at least he did one time. Other times not. Oh, mercy me. The unthinkable has happened. Ooh. room is dangerous. I know you might be thinking, Fang, you're right. This room is dangerous. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's no secrets up here. And I would have to come back. Oh, the horror. Hang on now. Oh. Oh. Today ends a year better than most. My children are both beautiful and healthy, and I just know that Julia is in love with someone. I only wish she would confide in me, but she refuses to even admit there is anyone. A girl and her mother shouldn't have secrets. Edwin is at the age when he needs to strike out on his own, find his own way, but he seems fearful of stepping out of his father's shadow. Richard can be so overbearing at times, and I don't think he realizes how much Edwin lives to please him. The boy would do anything his father asks, and I'm afraid that is his greatest flaw. But what am I to do? Julia has been withdrawn and distant the last few days. I must assume that she and her romantic interest are either having a quarrel or are unable to be together. I know she has been sneaking out at night occasionally the last few months, and even watched her slip into Red's studio once. I asked him about it the next time I saw him, but he claimed to know nothing. Call it intuition or prescience, but I just have an ominous sense about her situation. I mentioned it to Richard today, but he dismissed the thought that she even has a love interest. Men have no intuition. My life may as well have ended today. I buried my... S my life may as well have ended today. I buried my sweet daughter in the ground, and I have no idea where my son is. He fled after realizing he had unwittingly brought about her demise. Oh, Builder, comfort us! Richard violated the sacredness of her diary. He read it and learned that the Highwater boy is Julia's love. He sent Edwin to deal the boy. He sent Edwin to duel the boy. They're both just boys. How could Richard be so reckless? How could he not have known what would happen? I've pulled Julia's old music box out of storage and put it on her dresser. She loved the melody so much as a child, and now it brings me comfort to hear it and see the tiny dancer, which was made in her likeness. I would do anything to hold my girl in my arms again, but she has gone on to be with the builder. I light candles in Edwin's room every night in his memory, since his greatest love was reading by candlelight. Perhaps seeing the candles in his window would invite him to return home to his family, knowing we will always forgive him for what happened. Richard has quickly spiraled into a very dark place since the funeral. I don't recognize my husband anymore. He's bordering on madness, and I don't know what to do. He's poured through every book we own and bought dozens and brought He's poured through every book we own and brought dozens more into the library. And when I try to ask him about it, he mumbles about how And when I try to ask him about it, he mumbles about how he must find a way. Find a way? To do what? I don't know how much longer I can stay around here. I may have to stay at the inn for a few days, or go visit my cousin in the country, just to get away from all of this. Well, you didn't, lady. What are you, chicken? <laughs> also, this is a bathroom. Surely, there is nout in a bathroom. <laughs> what a ridiculous thing to say. Uh oh. 
But alas. That... <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Alrighty. Going to accept that right in its face hole. That's not a thing, is it? No. Okay. So here's the librettery. I can't just jump, I don't think, anyway. No. I of course not! Alright. What the hell? How? Come on, Unbenny. Move out of your Saturn hole orbit, head. Saturn. Wow. Hit it. Boop, 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 boop. That was a reference. Damn it. Oh, hey, check it out. <laughs> really how much though does it? Whoa, 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 whoa. Chill. So, I should go straight for the library, but because I'm me, I'll go straight for other places first. Is that a high-res version? I think it is. Cool. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm anticipating the library so much that I have nothing to say here. And also this... This, uh, this, this blanket over my head is no longer blocking stuff. Which is also distracting me. Not to mention my celery stock Can't left... Can nap around here? Jaw and ear place. Never really anything. Incredible. So that guy went over there, but you know what? Uh oh. <sighs> I'm just gonna go in here. It's you. You must be pretty desperate to invite a thief into your house. My flower, my my precious jewel, gone. What? My fault. It, it's all my fault. Both of them must find a way. What's your fault? My sweet gems are gone, and it's all my fault. You're not making any sense. Talk to me. Uh, uh, Mr. Garrett? You're here. Yes. I must have summoned you. Uh, uh, okay. I discovered my sweet flower was in love with Robert, the eldest Highwater son. In my rage, I sent my only son, Edwin, to challenge him in a duel. I should have known she would follow. Follow? My precious daughter, Julia. In my rage, I couldn't accept that she truly loves him. She followed them and tried to intervene. And Edwin... Ah! What happened? In the haze of fighting for his life, Edwin killed her by mistake. Now he's fled to... Builder knows where, and both my children are gone from me. I'm sorry for you, but why did you ask you for me? must find a way, Garrett. A way to bring her back. Okay. You want to bring your daughter back from the dead? Yes. Somewhere out there, someone must know of a way. The Hammerites, or, or, or that secret order you only hear rumors about, who supposedly have a vast compendium of knowledge. I've heard you defeated the trickster himself. Surely if there is information on such a ritual, you can find it. Ritual? So you're serious about all of this? Oh yes, Garrett. I'll do whatever I must to bring her back. Having you here has cleared my mind, and now I know exactly what I must do. But I need your help. So besides pity, why should I help you? I'll give my entire gem collection to you. Its value is enormous, but it means nothing to me now. The gems will be yours if you succeed in doing three things. Find information on a ritual, obtain all necessary components, and then make sure Brother Thaddeus is here to help me complete the ritual. <sighs> I don't like playing games or being manipulated. There's nothing shady going on here, Garrett. No one's trying to entrap you. I'm just a grieving old man looking to set things right and atone for his misdeeds. I guess it's worth the risk. Besides, you're the one making the real sacrifice. Very well. I'll be waiting down in the caverns below the house, getting as ready as I can. 
Join me down there when you have the information. You just pull this book to open the door. Once you've left the house, I'll send all the guards home, so the house should be empty when you return. Okay. And I'll just steal that. Thank you very much. Right, so, do we have any more? No. Okay, uh... Fairbanks is boarding on madness, but fulfill his request by finding information on a ritual. Right. Alan has bested me again. He came in and outbid me at the last moment on a lucrative deal with Caruso. I'm constantly reminded why our families have hated each other for generations when such things happen with regularity. Smithers caught wind of an underground deal coming up for bid soon. Seems that the old inventor Miller is wanting to discreetly auction off a formula for synthesizing emeralds. I have to beat Alan to the punch. After checking my accounts, I can only afford to bid 7,000 for the formula, but rumor has it that High Water isn't even interested, so that should be sufficient. I'll need to find a way of producing the emeralds once I have it, but it should provide me years of steady income. Damn! Miller informed me that I didn't have the highest bid, so Smithers did some digging, and it seems that Alan did get it after all. I've got fun. I've got to find a way to get it from him. He's leaving on a holiday in two days, so perhaps I can find someone to acquire it from the Highwater Estate while he's away. I met with one Garrett, a highly skilled and expensive thief who has quite a reputation in underground circles. He agreed to take the job to steal the formula for 5,000, and I offered a bonus if he can find my grandfather's sword. I don't like resorting to such measures, but I'm tired of always being outmaneuvered by Alan. Garrett came through, delivering the formula, as well as my grandfather's sword. In addition, he found some evidence of a mistress which I can use to my advantage in the future. This is a huge turn of events. I feel as though my luck is finally changing. Oh, Builder, what have I done? After Elizabeth kept insisting that Julia has a lover, I decided to poke through her diary, and to my horror, I discovered that not only has she a lover, but he is Alan's son, Robert. In my rage, I sent Edwin to defend her honor in a duel, but Julia got wind of it and followed, and intervened, only to be slain by Edwin. Tonight, I bury my daughter, and my son has not been seen since, and I cannot bear the pain. I have poured through every book I can find, from my personal and the public libraries, and cannot find any information on a ritual to do what I want to do. Must find a way. After giving up on finding a means myself, I'm sure that Garrett can find a way to do it. He came through for me once, and he can do it again, so I sent him a summons. Meanwhile, I will keep digging and looking. Must find a way. <laughs> oh, I'm hearing a guy upstairs. Sheesh. For a moment. <laughs> There. Anything else exciting up right here? Yeah. So I can't pull that book now, sadly. Yeah. But okay, right. So, find some information. The guards are still here. We gotta leave first. And you, you just come over here and stand around some more, will you? That would be highly erotically charged. Thank you. Hmm, <laughs> hmm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I suppose... Damn it, I wonder if there's anything up high that I could rope to or something. Maybe I'll find out later. After this thing has gotten easificated. Easificated. What is over here anyway? Never mind, I'll just friggin' leave. How's this? <laughs> oh, I guess I've got some mosses. I do. Hey, y'all. Fen, when are you gonna stop wasting your arrows that you're not gonna need in about two frickin' seconds here? Never! Oh. I can't leave that way. Dang it! Gotta get back up. And through the old smart waiter first, I guess. <gasps> don't, don't. Ah! Two guys up there, what the? Heck, peck neck. Oh man. Maybe I should just rope up like over there or something. Not sure. Can't a guy now. You made a big mistake. Hey, you guys. I don't remember this a bit at all. Okay. Come on. Come on. Looks like it's nothing. Whatever. As long as I don't actually 
fail the objective, I'm good. Come on! Must be one of them grubbers again. Oh no. Wait, no, I can't do that. I have to reach out. Hmm. Is it this side, right? What? I get the feeling I did that completely wrong. Oh, uh, okay. Good. Now I can go straight back in. Oh, come on. And finish it all up. Sound exciting! Good. Watch them spawn back in. <laughs> Although his wife might still be there. Is she a staff member? Nah, that would be rude. Ah, it is a kitchen. Just as I thought, but didn't say anything, so there's no proof that I thought it at all. Well, a deer leg is more than just a deer leg, so... Hold it dearly towards your own heart. And straight up stuff it into your great old noggin hole. And I'm talking about your nose. And then go to the bathroom in complete and utter disgust. And then eat some more. But this time, instead of a deer leg, you'll be eating your own leg. Eh. Eh. Okay. Oh, hey, it's a, it's a book. That's French, probably. My father has been more stern, more detached of late. I know both he and mother want me to move out and find my way in the world, but I just don't feel ready yet. Although I'm 23, I don't feel confident enough in myself to strike out into this cold and lonely world just yet. Father seems to think Julia has a lover. How absurd! The girl is barely 18, and she has no suitors, and if she did, I would surely know, as she confides everything in me. While she was out with Mother, he began rummaging through her room, probably looking for her diary. I wonder if Mother put him up to it. I can't believe it! Father found Julia's diary and read it, and she is in love with Robert Highwater! How could she be so stupid? He told me I have to challenge Robert to a duel and defend our family's honor. I'm frightened, but I know I have to go through with it. What would he think of me if I play the coward? I sent an urgent message to Highwater telling him to meet me in the cemetery at St. Alden's at midnight tonight. Michael and Aaron are going with me, but they know it's just between me and Robert and not to intervene. I have an ominous sense of foreboding about tonight. One way or the other, I'm being forced onto my own path. Finally. I only wish it were voluntary, Father. Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, hey. I'm not sorry. Because I keep hearing these phrases that come from popular songs or popular shows. And since, I don't, since I don't listen to or watch any of them, I end up just repeating them without knowing what I'm talking about. Uh-oh. Stupid idea of no drinking on Dowdy. Yeah, this not the greatest exit I just now realized. <laughs> what was that? Ah, oh, here comes the streets where ten thousand people pass each other at once. You don't share the stalls like that. It's unsanitary. Which is what you say to people when they're about to have fun. It's unsanitary. Don't play in the dirt. Don't eat that cat feces. Don't get out your Nintendo and bash your sister over the head with it until she gives you $50. Hey! You don't know where it's been. Your sister's head, I mean. Uh, just stop that line of thought. I think I'm going to... Uh-oh. <laughs> walk is just so like... Oh, her, 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 her. I just can't believe it. If that's a new motion, then they made a whole new walk motion just for Miss Confident over there. That's cool, I guess. So. There's distant sounds again. No screaming nor cats this time, though. So, yeah. Gotta go to the chapel to find some info. And, as you can imagine, the chapel will have hammerites in it. 
Ooh, skip. Whoa. Oh. Is <laughs> this? That's that's the deal. And he screams. Birds chirping. Any princess peaches on umbrellas? Nay. How curious. <laughs> Build a also, I like how that's a flashlight. It's cool, even though the end is not lit, but eh, whatever. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to 12 your ass straight into the ground. But it is a cool flashlighty looking thing. And might as well put this on my own doorstep as well. Because I seem to become... I seem to become... Oh no, I'm a grown man. So never mind that. <laughs> Anyways, yes, I, I, I thought this was a little too easy to open, personally. Wow. Those hammers. So interested in security, the builder would disappear. Builder loves thieves, that's why he keeps letting me rob his places over and over and over again. Now, here, I may be able to find some dirt on some guy with a pagan harlot or something, which I never found before because I'd forgotten it was mentioned in a book, and here's the basement, by the way. It's a much easier way to get into yonder basement than uh, that way. Hey. Go on and fold your arms in that b-boy stands, but when it comes to old cuisine, there's one f-word. Fuck. <laughs> also, it's oat cuisine, not hot. What the heck? Because seriously, French. Also, you, you gotta learn to pronounce French properly. It's not like O oh and O, it's like O uh, and O uh, and stuff. That's offensive, I'm pretty sure. Right, well. Yeah. There's, there's hammerites here, and I just don't got no time. For those who are taking your hammer, you are just ham now, and we're gonna eat you up. Ah, oh, still in my veins. Get it out. 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 Yeah. Yeah, you, ser seriously, dude. Turn and face me like a man. Let us duel to the pain, to the to the slight the discomfort. Well, fine if you don't want. Switch anywhere. Okay, so I think that I may have missed something in one of these here rooms. Possibly a hammer in a chest or some jokey joke. You know what? I don't really feel comfortable looking with dudes all up the place. However. No, hammerites are too security-minded to be carrying their thing on their thing. What, this guy's just like, hey, yo. Not for much longer. <laughs> Let's hope nobody has a lantern or a flashlight. A flashlight. Oh, <laughs> that didn't sound good. If I wanted to fall in love with an object, I would... Never mind. I know there's some dude around here. Because I saw him at one point. No, this is the ladder I'm thinking of that's, like... Super not friendly to get down. Fine enough. Where are you, dude? You over here, ain't you? No. Maybe I took him out already then. Fair enough. Flash bombs? Do you think I'm some sort of stripper? Flashman? Flasher.gif? Very, very good. Very, very, very stimulating. Oh, I do love poetry so. Verily, I have taken every book of poems from the library that I could find. Brother Nathaniel doth periodically admonish me and entreateth me to return the borrowed books, but I cannot. They are my comfort and my most treasured resource. How else to become a great poet but to study such material? And already they have been a boon. Why, just yesterday eve I wrote the following verse. My soul be wrapped in harsh repose. Midnight descendeth in raven-coloured clothes. But soft behold a sunlight beam cut as a... Cutteth a swath of glimmering gleam, my heart expandeth, tis grown abulgent, inspired by thy beauty effulgent. <laughs> That's actually kind of good. I mean, the last line is like funny and joke, but like seriously, bad poems that people write on purpose are like way more bad than this. 
it's kind of awkwardly decent. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, okay, so I'm pretty sure I gotta look behind a bed somewhere. I don't know. Well, at least there's soft surfaces to dump them on, so there's that at least. Now, I definitely, I definitely gotta look behind it. Yeah, seriously, man. Don't worry, don't worry, just looking behind your bed, no worries. No, blah, 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 etc. Maybe it's not in this room, no, it could be in the other one. Wait, 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 no, it's by the book of poetry. It's around here somewhere. Ooh, what is it, what is it? Could be this one. No. Hmm. You heard her right. Where the heck are you going, you stupid sod? Just like gets up and walks the hell right over there. Okay. I guess he gets out of my way so I can look or something. Ah, uh, I know. I heard. You know, this mission loves its tiny switches. I'm not an enormous fan. I get you know, like I say, fair enough-ish if it's a secret, but. You know, meh. That's the one that moves. Okay, so it's on a beam. Oh, here? It's on the top bunk. This is my thinking voice. I could swear it was the one with the poetry book, but. God, this is crazy. This is crazy. What's going on? <laughs> Next to the one that moved, that's sort of self-referencing logic there, but okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, I think I remember this. It was shown as like a... Jeez, er, picture for the mission and nothing else. Holy hell. The third poster hath arrived today. My cousin in Wayside hath come through again, mailing it to me surreptitiously in plain brown packaging. It depicts a lovely lass who doth excite my loins in ways I had long forgotten since joining the Order. <laughs> my guilt over this sinful indulgence is only surpassed by my fear of being discovered. What would Brother Nathaniel, or Builder forbid, Brother Thaddeus say, were my secret room to be found? But no matter, I cannot restrain my urges. <laughs> Builder, forgive me this one million transgression. Z no loot or nothing? Just, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, hammer girls. <laughs> it's, it's pretty great. Alrighty, let's get serious again now. Too bad you can't take that book and dump it on Thaddeus's desk. I always like when you can do that, even though I invariably end up forgetting. So anyways. Thy will shall be done, Master Builder, in the small things. Yeah, so anyways. Dude's walking around there. Pardon me. I want to see and remember what this other letter is. I've got an inkling, and I think that it may profit me not at all to go over here. Where did that guy end up going, anyway? Just, like, walk somewhere. End up just standing around. Where the heck did he go? Did he just walk all the way upstairs or something? Oh, well. Yeah. That's my surprised sound. No, oh, that's a great big old treat for everyone involved. So yes, we have this room and we end up out here. 
And we could... Oh. <laughs> okay. My inklings were sort of... Weirdly strange. <laughs> Anyways, yes, you can get out this way. This time. How odd, but there's like... No loot here or nothing? It's just like, hey, yo. It's a better entrance than the front. I gets it. I gets it. Yeah, I guess they deliver the St. Ferris. <laughs> Been here. I don't know why I'm acting all flirty to the camera just about brew. Witch's brew, perhaps, but not a normal brew. 40 minutes. Taken over, except I'm gonna have to cut out some flubs and readables, or maybe I'll leave all of them in. So now you know why I left all of them in. It wasn't a mistake. It was a brick joke. Well, it was a, a brick anyway. Oh, shit. Wow. Sometimes they don't have a sphere of psychic perception around their faces. Uh-oh. <sighs> okay. It's a long-winded body dump, but body dump nonetheless. So I'm looking for info. I won't find it in the basement. Come on! Yeah, wow. I, I hear that stock voice and like not to not to be egotistical, even though I will be anyways, because who the hell is gonna stop me? I want to be egotistical, so I'm the greatest, I'm the best, I'm an awesome and I'm a narcissist. Bow to me! Well I don't demand anybody bow to me. I just demand that they not stab me for saying I'm great. Well, I don't even demand that really, but uh, I think I lost my train of thought here. But when I hear that stock voice, I'm like, wow, I I I do a pretty good imitation. Well, not now, because I'm purposely doing it wrong, but, you know, if I do it right, I'm good. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, bow before the builder, so I bow, but nothing happened. It was just a commandment. Nobody worry about nothing. Oh. So, it's just wood. It's just wood everywhere. The wood is evil. Stand forth. And speak thyself if thou be there. Yeah, I, it's it's weird. That voice just sounds overly familiar. Like, yeah, I... And speak thyself if thou be there. But I can't, I can't, I can't do it, man. I can't do it, mate. Ah, stand forth. Stand forth. This is my let's play. Stand forth. Except it's, it's not a let's play because I'm retired and I'm never doing it since April, ever. So, um, yeah. Not ghost in this one. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. So, what you gotta do is... You know the reason. Oh, hey. It's a stitch. Uh, anyways, yes, what you gotta do is... Uh... I'm sure those are folded papers. Nothing... Nothing more to them. They've escaped from the naughty room. Wow. Yeah, you gotta climb up these ladders. Cause, I don't know, I always like to climb up ladders around bookcases. Whoa. Could be something. Well, there isn't one up here. There isn't a something up here, but there will be. I guarantee you. Oh. But with all the books, there sure aren't a heck of a lot to read. There should be one around. Yeah, well, I'm getting to be, like, stating facts time supreme, so I should probably... There's nothing up here. Neither. Boy. Such a disappointment for a girl. Guys don't get disappointed, though. Oh, there Finn goes with his, like, clever making fun of gender presuppositions that is just so funny and be clever all the time. Here, what about here? Also, oh, here, there's a book, but never mind. I'm sure this is much more exciting up here. What do we got here? Nothing. Oh, wait. This is the ritual of rebirth. Inscribe a red octopus upon the floor of the ritual chamber and place the deceased therein. Place four keystones, one each of death, life, spirit, and flesh, cardinally by compass points. When the deceased has risen, a donor must enter the octacle in forfeit. Then must the scrolls be burned. First fiber hemp, then fire oak. Finally, dragon snap waterweed. As the risen and her true love recite the mantra. We don't know what it is. Something est. So this is the Book of Shadows. 
friggin... Awesome. First time I played, I came in here before because I always try to short-circuit everything like, Oh, I better do everything before the main goal! And so I looked at that and I'm like... <laughs> so that's the information. Now let's have some fun. The Adventures of Brother Bernard. Brother Bernard and the Dog. One day, Brother Bernard was walking home when he passed a group of boys sitting in the dirt of the street and surrounding a small, scruffy dog. The boys appeared to be arguing about something and gesticulating wildly. Gesticulating wildly. Brother Bernard approached and asked what the boys were doing. One boy responded, We found this puppy that was lost and has no home. We're trying to decide who gets to keep him. Impressed with the charity of the boys, Brother Bernard said, "'Tis a good thing you do there, giving a home to this poor wretch. How will you decide who gets to keep him?" The boy replied, "'We're taking turns telling lies. Whoever tells the biggest lie gets to keep the dog.'" Brother Bernard was appalled by this and admonished the boys, "'Shame on you! You should not tell lies. Lying is not a good way to solve anything. And I thought you were good boys. Why, when I was your age, I never told a lie!' The boys looked crestfallen for a moment, and then together said, Give him the dog! <laughs> Brother Bernard and the horse. Brother Bernard was traveling to his new posting in a town far from his home. Actually, I already know what this story is. Well, I mean, because I read it, but I... I only knew because I've heard this one. Who boy. Having no other means of transport, he was forced to walk. On the fourth day of his journey, footsore and weary, he came upon a small monastery where he sheltered for the night. Seeing his predicament, his host, Brother Joseph, gave him the use of his horse, asking that he send the animal home upon his arrival and instructing him in his use. He be a pious beast, said Brother Joseph. To make him go, say only, praise the builder. To make him stop, say simply, hammer and forge. Brother Bernard thanked Brother Joseph, and the next morning he climbed on the beast and cried, Praise the Builder! The horse immediately set off down the road at a gallop. He travelled all day without pause, and in late afternoon saw that the road approached a great ravine, and the bridge was out. Whoa! he cried, but the horse ran doggedly on. Whoa! Stop! Halt! He cried, panicked, for he could not remember the way to stop the beast. Then it came to him. Hammer and forge, he cried. The horse came to an abrupt halt on the very edge of the cliff. Shaking with relief, Brother Bernard mopped his brow and exclaimed, Praise the Builder! <laughs> There's only one joke involving horses and religious folk, and it's that one. Okay, okay. And here's a sacred library where you do the naughty business. Explicit written permission of Thaddeus. Out on business, but return. Yeah, well, we get that key somewhere. I don't remember where. <sighs> That's okay. Seriously, though. I swear there was stuff up on at least one of these things besides that friggin' book. Yeah. Oh, man, my loins are quivering with joy. I'm not here, though? Okay. <sighs> hey, guys, it's gonna be... Flipped a minute long and no more. Uh, uh -oh. <sighs> fine, 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 fine. Boy, there sure is a lot of reading in these here missions. Good thing. Ah, mm -mm -mm. oh, where hath the day gone? Never enough time. I must finish cataloging the Seneschal Chronicles, and I must not forget to update the chapel annals. I need an assistant. Mayhap I'll speak to Thaddeus. Klamath writes from St. Ferrer's requesting the loan of the Terranmas scriptures. Happy to oblige, of course, but I was rather looking forward to receiving a copy of the Trials of St. Dismas from him. Pity it was stolen. He asks that I keep an eye out, lest it come up for sale locally. I imagine he hath sent word to all parts of the city, but I suspect he is already in the hands of a private collector, and we shall see it no more. I must again remind Brother Martin to return the books he hath borrowed. It is becoming a habit with him, which remindeth me... Several other books and scrolls appear to be missing from the library. I suspect it to be nothing more than that they hath been misplaced. I shall ask the novices to search the place top to bottom. They hath been known in the past to leave them lying atop the stacks, and I be too old for climbing up and down those wretched ladders all day. Oh. Well, good thing I'm not. Whoa, oh, oh, that was some kind of quip. And holy hell, I am the quip master. Can't nobody match my incredible words like I am gonna kill you with a crossbow. What? What? 
these doors like unseal like <laughs> that's what they sound like so anyway as i was saying getting back to the business at hand i've got a great big secret to avast upon ye and that secret is just yesterday 